Okay, hello everyone. Welcome. We've just hit 10 o'clock. How's it going? Good. Fantastic. So thank you everyone for joining the session and welcome to the College of Science and Engineering uh, welcome orientation event that we have today. Um, a big thank you to all of you who've taken the time to join online and are listening in. Uh, and welcome to those of you who are watching this recording at a later date. Uh, my name is Tessa uh, and I'll be your uh, MC or host for this event today. Um, for those of you who are watching live, you're more than welcome to put uh, questions in our chat um, and we'll answer them as we go. And if we can't get to them in the session, we'll be sure to answer your queries um, shortly after the event. Uh, I'm here joining you from my office in the Bedf beautiful Bedford Park campus, Flinders University on Ghana country. Uh, Flinders University acknowledges the traditional custodians um, of the lands on which we study, uh, work and meet and pays respects to their elders past, present and emerging. We've got quite a lot of things we'd like to get through today. We're going to start with some uh, welcomes, including our official welcome uh, video and welcomes from the, uh, the deans of the College of Science and Engineering who are joining us uh, live on this web chat. That'll then be followed uh, with some course and enrolment advice uh, from our student admin services team. And then I'm going to go through a few tips about how to survive, thrive and what to do next. I'd also like to note that the things that I'll be going through, all this information is also all available online uh, through the Flinders student site, um, through that, those orientation pages, if you'd like to go back and look at anything in more detail. We'll also hear for, from some current students uh, and they will be giving you some uh, tips and insights about how to make the most of your orientation and how to find your feet at Flinders. I'd like to start with um, a, sh a short video that's uh, an official welcome from, the, from Flinders University. Welcome to Flinders. I'm Vice Chancellor Colin Sterling and I acknowledge that I'm speaking on Garna Yarta, the traditional lands of the Garna people, and I pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. Nina Marnie, hello, I'm Deborah West. I'd also like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands on which our campuses are located in South Australia, the Northern Territory and Victoria. I'm delighted to see so many new students joining us at Flinders, whether you're studying at one of our campuses or online, from the comfort of your own home. You're now part of the Flinders community. Every year it's terrific to see that so many people have chosen to study at Flinders. I love walking around our campuses, feeling that incredible buzz and seeing students just like you talking to new friends, sharing ideas, helping each other out. That same sharing nature extends also, of course, to our students studying online. Hi, I'm Simone Olagatu. As a young Lundjata woman out of my country, I also acknowledge and pay my respects to the traditional owners of the land on which our campuses are located. At Flinders, we understand that it's a privilege to be on Ghana country and we pay respect to the heritage of this place. We want you to feel welcome at Flinders University and to connect with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander culture. One way of doing this is through public artworks such as the Brooklyn mural, Yarra, the feather sculptures on Registry Road and in the plaza, the new Younger Rendi and Perilla meeting place, and the gift of words embedded in the plaza stairs. Your first few days may seem like a bit of a blur. We've all been there. But starting at uni is a big step and it takes time to learn all the ins and outs. But don't worry, plenty of support is available to help you make your transition to study at Flinders as easy as possible. Flinders staff and student ambassadors can help you access the services you need to find your way around our website, around your course material, around our campuses. Whatever help you need, it's only a click or a question away. And I know from experience that our staff and your fellow students are kind, inclusive and always ready to help. So where do you begin? However you choose to study, the Flinders Student website is a great place to start. You'll find orientation information that'll step you through your first few weeks and plenty of information about university life. Our weekly newsletter, Ping, and social media pages will keep you up to date on university events and Flinders news. Flinders has a busy social scene and the Flinders University Student Association, FUSA, can help you connect with social clubs, sporting clubs, and many other activities. You'll have access to a range of support services, including study and library support, 
health and well-being services, as well as enrolment and course support, just to name a few. Information about how to get in touch with these services can be found on the Support and Services directory on the student website. You can contact the Flinders Connect team if you need to help with your enrollment or course information. The Student Learning Support Service is here for any academic help you might need, including how to write assignments, general study skills and referencing. You can access study support on campus at the Learning Lounge or online using Flinders 24-7 Studiosity Service or through a wide range of online SLSS study guides and videos accessible via the student website. Our confidential and professional health, counselling and disability services are available to all students and you can access those face-to-face, -face, on the phone or online. Whether you're studying with us online or joining us on campus, we're confident you're going to love being part of the Flinders community. And we hope you'll have the time of your life. So thank you for, all for listening. I'd now like to um, uh, give a very special welcome to our Vice President Executive Dean of the College of Science and Engineering, Professor Alistair Rendell. So thank you, Alistair, and I'm now going to pass uh, the floor over to you. Okay, so thank you, Tessa. And uh, I would also like to welcome everybody to Flinders University and to the College of Science and Engineering. Uh, as Tessa mentioned, so my name is Alistair Rendell. I have the great pleasure of being the Vice President and Executive Dean for the College of Science and Engineering. Uh, in that role, it means that I uh, meet you when you do something which is very good and you graduate, or I meet you if you do something very bad. Hopefully I don't meet uh, any of you for the latter. Uh, the College of Science and Engineering is one of uh, six colleges across the university. Clearly, we are the best of the, of the colleges. We collectively believe in the power of science and technology to solve real world problems. And be that that you come here and are enrolled in a degree in animal behavior and you're looking at the at issues and problems related to the marine e ecosystem. You're studying forensic science and you're developing new uh, techniques to analyze uh, crime scenes. Whether you're enrolled in the in our Bachelor of Biomedical Engineering and developing um, new implants and um, uh, biomedical devices or the technology which underpins uh, the Internet of Things and uh, intelligent infrastructure. Our job uh, is to equip you with the knowledge and the skills and most importantly the, co the confidence to embrace these challenges and indeed this is what uh, underpins or is in the very DNA of Flinders University and we are in that we are named after um, Matthew Flinders. I don't know how many of you are uh, aware of Matthew Flinders he lived from 1774 to 1814 and dying at the age of uh, just 40. During his short life, he made three voyages from uh, Britain to the Southern Ocean. He circumnavigated Australia and he charted uh, or mapped most of South Australia. Uh, much of his achievements were actually uh, um, done before he reached the age of 30. He is uh, famous for saying that neither birth nor fortune had favored him, meaning that he was not born into the aristocracy or did he inherit a huge amount of money, but rather that his actions shall speak to the, to the world. So he will be known for what he um, uh, achieved. This is very much the sentiment that was embraced by the founding uh, Vice Chancellor of Flinders University, uh, Professor Peter Carmel, when he uh, encouraged all of the staff and students of the university to experiment and experiment bravely. Indeed, this was the sentiment that was embraced by one of our alumni, Rodney Brooks, who went on from, from his education in Flinders University to develop the technology which was behind the uh, Mars rover. 
So building the technology that would fly all, all, all the way to Mars and operate successfully is um, no small challenge. It is, it is looking more currently, it is why we are uh, pleased to have as part of the College of Science and Engineering, the 2021 STEM, uh, South Australia STEM Educator of the Year, the South Australia Innovator of the Year, the 2020 South Australian Scientist of the Year, and the 2020 Prime Minister's New Innovators Prize, prize uh, holder on our staff, amongst others. So let me encourage you in your time at Flinders University and within the college. So take on the difficult challenge, embrace all the university has to offer, and build your connections. So hugely important in your later life will be who you know and um, can call upon. And in the um, words of the famous uh, expression, remember that education is what is left after all that you have learnt has been forgotten. So it's not just what you do, do cramming for the last minute exam, but it's the whole experience of, uh, of being at the university and the other things that you do and learning how to learn, which is hugely important. So welcome to the university to Flinders University and welcome to the College of uh, Science and Engineering. Back to you, Tessa. Thank you very much for that, Alistair. I'd now like to introduce everyone to Professor John Roddick, who is the College of Science and Engineering Dean of Education. So over to you, John. Good morning, and I'd like to add my welcome to that of Tessa and Colin and Deb and Alistair. So welcome to the College of Science and Engineering at Flinders. I'm Professor John Roddick, I'm Dean of Education at the College, and it's exciting to be part of your new higher education journey because your future very much starts today. Whether you're studying on campus or online, the College offers a world-class, and in many cases, a professionally accredited curriculum. Many of the courses you'll study are accredited engineering, physics, chemistry, environmental health, computing, GIS. And, and, and that means that industry has looked at our courses and likes what it sees. Indeed, the college is renowned for connecting academics and students with industry and government, including through our nationally recognized work integrated learning program. And this connection to industry sees our graduates get jobs at a greater rate than any other tertiary institution in South Australia. While you're studying here, you'll have access to some of the most knowledgeable minds in science, computing and engineering, and they'll help you craft your own thinking around your studies and your discipline and ensure that you graduate ready for the jobs that would exist in the future, many of which that don't exist now. But at the heart of it, we're here to help you succeed. Whether you study at the beautiful Bedford Park campus or the amazing Tomsley Innovation Hub, you'll study in an environment that hopefully gives you everything you need to succeed. So whether you're a student scientist, a student engineer, a student IT professional, I'm convinced that you've made the right choice to study with us. But attending uni is more than just getting your degree. Student life is a key part of the overall experience. At Flinders and within the College of Science and Engineering, there are many ways to connect with other students and make the most of campus life, including joining one or more of a large number of societies, clubs and associations that exist. And I encourage you to do so is it add to your experiences while you're here. Here at Flinders, we value and we celebrate diversity, equality, and inclusivity. Everybody is welcome and everyone will be supported. So in summary, there are many ways the college at Flinders is here for you. Your life is about to change and your journey starts today. And we're here 
to make that journey everything you want it to be. So once again, welcome to Flinders, and I'll pass you back to Tessa. Thank you. Thank you very much, John. Okay, so thanks and welcome again, everyone. Uh, so for the next sort of a little uh, bit of the session, we're going to go through some uh, really important bits of information to get you started. Uh, probably one of the most important things are your enrollment and your course structure, those, you know, the, the fundamentals and how you uh, piece your topics together in your um, particular program. So for this, I'm actually now going to pass over to uh, Megan from our student admin services team and student support to talk a little bit about enrollment and course advice. Thank you, Tessa. And I also add my welcome. Welcome everyone to Flinders University. Um, so my name's Megan, as Tessa said, and I'm one of the enrollment and course advisors for the College of Science and Engineering. Uh, we have two advisors in our college and myself and my colleague Bill. So our role is uh, to provide you with some support to, relating to the overall structure and organisation of your degree. Uh, today, as per the slide, I want to give you three tips to get you started that will make your life a little bit easier. My first tip today is about your course rule and your topic enrolment pattern and where to find these things on the Flinders web. To find your course rule, um, the best way and quickest way is if you just Google the words course rule Flinders, and then what will bring up is what we call the handbook, and you can search in the handbook for your degree. The course rule will list all the topics that fulfill the requirements of your course. It will also list any rules that apply to your specific degree. Now to assist you with doing that enrollment and finding the right enrollment pattern for your topics, We've created study plans for all the degrees offered by the College of Science and Engineering. They show you a suggested order that you need to enrol in your topics. Um, we've taken into consideration semester availability of your topics and any prerequisite requirements. And again, the easiest way to find that plan is to do a Google search. Use keyword like study planner Flinders. This will lead you to the Flinders web page where you can search for your particular degree. Uh, again, the best way to, to find things is to, to minimise your options is if, say, if you're in an engineering degree, choose words like civil or biomedical as your search choices. You can then click on your course and a PDF will pop up a document and this will show you the, a suggested enrolment pattern that you should follow. For most of you, this is exactly what you'll need, this study planner. But if you're, but if you're applying for things like credit, or uh, from previous university level study, or you've been admitted to a combined degree, or you just need a little bit of extra assistance. I'll now uh, tell you about tip two, which is how to put in an Ask Flinders request. So basically requesting support through Ask Flinders is the fastest way to get your request to a person or department that's able to assist you to action it. So you can do this via what's called your Okta dashboard, and as you'll see on there, there's the app symbol on our slide just there, the Ask Blinders app, um, and you can put your request in through there. Um, some examples of when you might lodge an Ask Blinders request, maybe you need a combined study plan, or again, you're seeking that credit from previous university level study. Perhaps you've got a timetable clash that you're having trouble resolving. Uh, you're trying to enrol in a topic, but you cannot. If you need help but don't know where to go, there are all reasons to put in an Ask Linda's request and your request will get sent to the direct area that will be able to help you with that query. Now, for my final tip of the day, um, the college also offers course advice sessions. Uh, currently, we're only offering this service via the phone. We have a course advisor available Monday to Friday from 11.30 to 1 p.m. What you can do is call the college office on 8201-7700 to request a call from one of the advisors. These sessions are a good way to talk about any issues you're having that you've not been able to resolve through the Flinders website or the Ask Flinders request. Sometimes you just don't know who to ask. Now, we might not be able to always answer your questions, but we can certainly direct you to the right person or place to get answers if we're not able to assist you. So, 
Just to finish up, it's a reminder that our role deals with the structure and organisation and progression of your course, basically the admin needs that go along with being a student. We can't give you advice on academic content or help you with your assignments. You'll need to talk to your topic coordinators and lecturers about that. So that's a quick three tips for today. I want to wish you all your best with your studies here at Flinders. I'll now hand you back to Tessa and she can continue on with the orientation session. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Megan. So for this next little bit, I'm going to talk about getting your essentials sorted. So in these kind of first, ideally first week, first few weeks of orientation, um, it's a great opportunity to get um, your essentials sorted, get settled uh, and get best set up for your studies. The first is your student ID card. So the student ID card is really important for some activities that you might do as a student including printing, borrowing books from the library, uh, and sometimes you'll be required to bring your student ID in if you have an exam um, that's invigilated. However, the student ID card is also fantastic because it gets you a lot of discounts. Um, Adelaide Metro is a big example, but also things like the upcoming fringe ticks, uh, movie tickets, and many other events will give discounts to students if you've got a student ID card, so make sure you do that. Uh, you can request your ID card through um, Order My ID Card uh, in Compass, so under My Systems in Compass. You'll also, if you haven't already, need to enrol in your topics. So um, Megan has highlighted what you need to do um, to, uh, you know, find out which ones you need to enrol in. Um, but if you have any uh, issues with actually the technical side of doing this through the computer, um, there's help there available for you. So in the new student section of Compass, um, it'll go through the information. Uh, if you're having any difficulties, you can uh, lodge a, um, an, an Ask Flinders request, or you can call Flinders Connect um, on 1300 354 633, and it's option two, and someone can step you through that process within business hours. Um, the next is your textbooks. So some or many of your topics, depending on what you're enrolled in, will have text, a textbook or textbooks associated with that. So orientation week is the perfect opportunity to get that sorted out. Uh, you can see which um, textbooks are required for your course. Uh, if you look at students.flinders.edu.au slash my course slash textbooks. Um, and once you know what you need, there are actually many different options for sourcing your textbooks. Some of them are actually available for loan from the library, so you might not even need to purchase them. And many of them are, in fact, you can view them online. Um, if you're looking to purchase, um, there are uh, retailers such as Booktopia. A lot of those online retailers will have just about uh, everything and anything you need. But also do a bit of research because many past students will sell their textbooks secondhand and you may be able to pick one up um, at a slightly discounted price uh, from, a, from a former student or a student um, that's no longer, in, no longer requiring them. And transport to Flinders. So depending if you're coming into certainly the Bedford Park campus, the Tonsley campus, uh, Sturt campus, there are many uh, different options available. Uh, there's many different buses through Adelaide Metro and we also now have a railway um, station at Flinders, the Flinders Railway line. So between the CBD and Flinders on that line is actually only 22 minutes. That's so pretty fast. Um, there's also a free loop bus um, that goes between kind of these pickup points of Adelaide Metro services, whether it's bus or train. Um, and um, some key other locations on Bedford Park, um, Sturt and Tonsley. You can also download the uh, Busminder app and you can sort of see exactly where they are in real time and how long you need to wait at the bus stop. If you do come to campus by car, if you're driving, um, at Bedford Park and Sturt campuses, uh, you do need to pay for parking. Um, but there are different options depending really on the frequency um, that you do require the parking. Have a look at flinders.edu.au slash parking to find out information. Have a look to see which uh, option works best for you if you do come by a car. 
I'll also mention scholarships. It's always a really good idea and orientation is a great time to have a look to see what's available. Uh, as you would imagine, most of the scholarships are merit-based. Um, however, you don't always need to be a top performing student to apply. And there are many different categories. Uh, they, so the scholarships, um, the different scholarships can be found at students.flinders.edu.au slash scholarship. So make sure you have a look to see if there's something that can apply to you and have a go and apply for them. Scholarships are obviously fantastic um, as they help out with uh, funding your studies, but it also looks really good on your CV if you've won a scholarship as well. Wi-Fi. If you're on campus, um, no need to um, use your phone data. We've got um, great Wi-Fi here. Um, so that's actually in our Bedford Park, Tonsley, um, uh, Sturt, and also we've got um, places in the CBD. We've got campuses in the CBD and it works all through there as well. The Wi-Fi network um, is EDU Rome. Your username will be your FAN, and FAN you'll become very familiar with, but stands for Flinders Access Number. So this Flinders Access Number is typically the first four letters of your surname and a four-digit code. The password is the same that you'll use for your university password. So if you're logging onto a computer, you would use your FAN, Flinders Access Number, and a password, and that's the same for your Wi-Fi. So you can get that on your phone or device. Um, if you need any more information about that, there's, um, of course, information on our website um, in the student pages under Support Computing Wi-Fi. Another word you'll become very, very familiar with um, as a student is FLOW, which stands for Flinders Learning Online. So I'm actually going to leave it to this short video. You can watch this again. Of course, it's on our website. Um, that will give a bit more information about what Flow is because you'll be using this extensively through your degree. Hi, my name is William. Today I'm going to talk to you about Flinders Learning Online or Flow. We recommend you get familiar with Flow early on as you're going to be using it throughout your studies here at Flinders. Flow is Flinders online learning platform and provides a range of interactive tools that support your learning. You can access Flow through your student dashboard. Each topic you are enrolled in will have its own topic page in Flow. These pages are usually in Flow one week before teaching starts. The appearance and structure of pages in Flow will vary from topic to topic, but they all contain similar tools and information. There is a range of information and resources available in each of your topic pages, including assignment guidelines, lecture recordings, readings, forums and quizzes. Flow is also used to submit your assignments, view your grades and get assessment feedback. In addition, Flow also contains non-topic pages to support your studies such as the Student Learning Centre and Library Quiz pages. The Flow Help Desk is available online, over the phone or in person. There is also a link to Flow Help wherever you are in Flow. If you have any specific questions about your topic, you can also contact your topic coordinator. Well, thank you for listening to that. So those were really some just key things to get you started. And I know that in the orientation, you're going to get bombarded with information. So um, all of that in the getting your essentials sorted, you can find that information online as well in the student pages under orientation. Um, and orientation is a really exciting time, um, really good fun. And there's a lot of things you can do to make the most of your orientation. So orientation is not just this week. We're essentially in week zero, O week, um, but it actually goes for four weeks. So, and in each of these weeks, they're focused on different themes. Orientation, O week, we're really about getting yourself settled, navigating the campus, navigating the platforms that we use, um, Flinders uh, Learning Online, Compass, uh, the web pages. Uh, but as we move through in our first week, we really focus on making connections, making connections with the staff, but also making connections with your fellow classmates and other students, whether they're in your topics, sporting clubs you're joining, or other social student societies, um, of which we have many. We move into Wellbeing Week, uh, and o Oasis, which you'll hear a little bit about later, plays a big role in this section. There's 
many different activities that center around um, you know, your mental health and your well-being uh, during your university life uh, and workshops around meditation, yoga um, uh, and balancing your uni life, work life, personal life uh, and making the most of your time here at Flinders. In week three, which is the fourth week of orientation, it's skills week and this is where we really try to focus on those fundamental skills that help will help you succeed uh, in your studies things and you will see there will be many um, events uh, from uh, support services such as the library student learning center our stem ambassador program that will help you with fundamental uh, skills to make the most and really maximize your grades and maximize your time and so so check out all of the resources at students.flinders.edu.au slash orientation. And if you haven't already, there's actually an orientation planner. So you can actually customize an orientation uh, schedule that suits you. So if you go to the orientation webpage slash planner, you'll see there's many different events and you can register for these events. There are now, um, fortunately, some that are available online. Um, sorry, that are available live and they'll be more and more introduced over the next few weeks as we're opening up a bit more. There are also many online options and of course you're all in one of them right now. So have a look to see what's out. There's lots of great things. Some are student focused, some are skills focused, uh, some are kind of uh, social, socially focused. Um, and if you put in your course, it will filter out those ones that are uh, relevant for you as well. There's also an online welcome hub. Uh, you can join these as well through the orientation planner. So if you sort of come out of these meetings and you think, oh, I've still got a whole lot of questions or something um, you know, comes to mind, you can actually drop into the online Ask Anything sessions and you can chat to either current students um, or current staff at Flinders University and get those questions answered. And there's no such thing as a silly question. We are here to answer questions and we want to get you really um, uh, settled and enjoying the campus and enjoying your university life. And as I said before, we, you know, you're going to get a lot of information. There's a lot of, uh, it's a new experience. Uh, and we have actually an orientation video library uh, that steps through um, a lot of these important things for you to know. We've had a look at this, the Flinders Learning Online, the Flow, um, Flow videos, and there's some other Flow videos as well that go into a bit more detail about how to access your readings, how to access your videos, uh, where to click uh, and things like that. There's videos about understanding textbooks and readings and understanding expectations around those. Um, there's also videos that help you understanding to understand your assignments and grades. Uh, some really fantastic tips for studying for success and these has been put together um, uh, by professionals and uh, have some really, really great advice. Um, and if you spend a little bit of time uh, being strategic about how you're studying, you'll find um, that you're, you really set yourself up um, for the best possible outcome of your studies. We're actually going to have a look in a minute about some of the um, support available to you at Flinders. And there's also many videos uh, created through Oasis about managing your well-being while you're at uni. And one of the really important things to note is this is a really, university is a really exciting time. It's really fun, uh, really um, sort of stimulating time, especially here at the College of Science and Engineering where you're surrounded by so much, you know, cutting edge research, technology, ideas. Um, but it is a big transition, uh, you know, whether you're coming from school, whether you're coming from uh, a break from your studies or the workplace, it is a, it's a different lifestyle and it has different expectations and, and demands. Um, so, and while it's a, a really uh, fantastic experience, it's important to know that there is help available to you uh, and to sort of be aware of where you can go to get it. And this help can take a range of different forms. Uh, anything from helping to enrol in your topics, helping to um, uh, with advice for study plan, through to um, health, through to student societies, uh, safety, uh, financial scholarships, etc. 
And one of the things that you can do to kind of uh, help you find your way at Flinders is a sort of, for one of a well, better word, a topic. It's not assessed, of course, um, but it's a bit of an online course that you can do to help you find your way at Flinders uh, and that introduces you to a lot of the support services. We'll also give you a bit of experience using Flow. So if you click on Flow under my systems section of Compass, and you search for finding your way at Flinders, um, you'll find this in the topic search. There are many different support options and uh, because of this, I'm going to summarize them. These are mostly summarized in this video, which I'll play and it will be the last video for this session. Imagine you've turned up to uni for the first time. It can be a little daunting. Where do you go and who do you go to for help? Flinders University has a lot of services to help you on your journey. Sometimes, uni will feel fun and easy. At other times, it can seem challenging. Flinders Connect is there to answer any questions and point you in the right direction. Flinders Connect can also assist you with enrolment, class registration, fees, scholarships, and general information. When it's time to study, there's the Library and Student Learning Support Service. Library staff can help you navigate the wealth of information across three Flinders Library branches. If you need help with Flinders Learning Online, the Library helps with that too. The Learning Lounge is available to help with academic writing, maths and statistics, referencing and English language support. You can also access Studiosity 24-7 for support with study and writing online. Everyone is welcome at FUSA, your student association. FUSA is home to the Student Council elected annually by students like yourself. It's their job to represent your rights and interests. They host lots of events on campus and are home to many clubs and societies for you to get involved in. FUSA also produces the student magazine Empire Times and offer free and confidential financial and academic advocacy. Flinders has more than 3,000 international students from over 80 different countries. International Student Services is the first point of contact for all onshore international students and offers a range of programs supporting your enrolment, study and social life. The Younger Endy Student Engagement Team provides support for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander students. This includes academic, pastoral, financial support and advocacy, scholarships, orientation, a culturally safe study space, social activities and more. Looking after your mental and physical health is important. At Health, Counselling and Disability Services, students can access confidential appointments with qualified doctors, nurses, experienced counsellors and disability advisors. Oasis is a student wellbeing centre focused on supporting the social, spiritual, physical and emotional needs of all students. Careers and employability connects you with industry, employers, career resources, or advice and access to over 8,000 job opportunities each year. It also houses the Flinders Horizon Award Program, providing unique opportunities and experiences to complement your studies. Let's keep in touch. Each week during term time, we send a newsletter called Ping straight to your uni inbox. It's designed so you only see what's relevant to you. Let us know if you have any ideas or feedback to improve your experience at Flinders. The Student Ideas Gateway allows you to tell us how to help. To connect with any of the services mentioned, go to students.flinders.edu.au. Thank you. There's just one other thing to mention um, about your safety is um, Flinders University is committed to providing a safe um, in, and a respectful learning environment for everyone. Um, and we really do hope that there are no issues. However, if you do witness or experience any socially unacceptable behaviour or harassment, um, please make a confidential report. You can do this either online through the safety on campus webpage or an email. Uh, or you can actually call 82012118 for support and advice from our Student Equal Opportunity Advisor. Note that when you're making a report, it doesn't initiate um, a complaint. It's the first step to offer a, your confidential support and information on what we can do next to help. I'd next like to move on to a few of our really fantastic uh, mentoring programs. Are the OGI program. But rather than hear from me, I'd like to pass over to one of our current OGIs in the College of Science and Engineering, uh, Michelle Newman, to tell you a little bit more about the program. So thanks, Michelle, and I'll pass over to you. Thanks, Tessa. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Michelle, and as Tessa mentioned, I'm part of the OGI program uh, this semester. A bit of background on me I started at Flinders four years ago. 
uh, as a mature age student on a very different career change um, from being a photographer. I completed my undergrad in marine biology and animal behaviour. Uh, finished that last year and this year I've started what's called an honours degree, which is essentially one year uh, where you design and run your own project. So even though I've been at Flinders for four years, I've been going through a lot of the same nerves and excitement and anxiety that many of you may be experiencing now or in the coming weeks. And this is where the OGUIDE program comes in. It's designed to help you transition to uni life uh, and learn about the range of support and advice services available and how to connect with them. One of the things that I was confronted with uh, and overwhelmed by when I started uni is there's all this support out there and I just didn't know where to start and it stopped me asking questions for a bit too long. So that's one of the things that we try and help you uh, help you through is where to go for what type of questions. So all the O guides are current students uh, and have been where you are now and they really want to use their experience of first year and their knowledge about Flinders to help you succeed. When you register for the program, um, you choose which O guide you want to uh, meet up with. Um, we all have a short little intro on the website uh, under CSC or College of Science and Engineering O guides. Um, so you can choose uh, who might be doing the same degree as you um, or similar interests. Uh, the plan is you will meet your O guide this week and then in weeks one, two and three of semester. So there'll be lots of opportunities for you to ask questions and find out about things like the essentials to start classes next week, connecting with other students, uh, navigating the uni terminology like Flow, Sam and Opta, which sound like a foreign language at the moment probably, um, where to go for study help. But we also talk about uh, non-academic opportunities and support like the health and wellbeing services, the clubs, the sports, um, and also we delve into career skills and development as well. So it's not too late to register. Uh, we've still got sessions going on this week and you can join up at any time. Uh, three of the College of Science and Engineering OGARDs are holding their sessions later today and there's one on Thursday. And he was actually one of my new students in when I was part of the program last year. So it's great to see him uh, join the program. So he's got really fresh information about what it's like to be in, uh, to be in your first year. Uh, so sign up uh, if you haven't already, and it would be lovely to see you during the week. And all the best. Thanks. Well, thank you so much for that, Michelle. So yes, just to recap, not too late to join. If you're new, um, if you don't know anyone, it's the perfect opportunity to just start to make some uh, make some connections, meet a few students and get some really inside information from some current students as well. The next program that we've, I'd like to talk a little bit about is the STEM Ambassador Program, which is the College of Science and Engineering Program. But again, let's have a break from me and I'm actually going to pass you over to one of our fabulous uh, STEM Ambassadors, Jamie, but I need to unmute him, so just... <laughs> Please I think I'm unmuted now. Oh, Jamie's unmuted. There we go. Perfect. Thanks, Jamie. Over to you. <laughs> All right. Hello, everybody. I am Jamie. And as Tessa said, I am a STEM ambassador. So what we do in the STEM ambassador program is that we are a drop in, no appointment necessary uh, help service. So we can help you with like um, your assignments and understanding some feedback on them. We can also help you with exam prep um, and just giving you a place to study uh, but also we can help connect you with all of the services that were mentioned before because that was a whole lot of information so <laughs> it can be better if somebody knows all of it for you um, and the stem ambassadors we're all current students here so we would we'll be doing our third year honors year or and even masters um, all studying at flinders so I am just starting my honours year in mathematical sciences. Um, 
So that means if you ever need any help with, say, mathematics or statistics, even data science and some programming, then you should definitely come and see me. Uh, but there's actually a whole like broad range of different disciplines that everybody covers in the STEM ambassador program. So you should be able to get help on pretty much every first year topic that you encounter, but also some of the later uh, topics too. Um, and yeah, it's, it's a really good program. We are running in semester weeks one through 12 and during Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So all first year students should automatically have been enrolled into the, the flow program, which means you'll be able to see the timetable and see who will be on at what time and what discipline they'll be in. Uh, you can also access some useful links and resources for this flow topic and learn some instructions on how to uh, access where we are. So we'll be running out of the Silk building and also online. Um, and the Silk building is this custom built uh, study space at Bedford, which is pretty nice. So you should definitely come and visit us. Um, we've had people come for uh, understanding assignment feedback, uh, just getting help with assignments, um, or even just using the space as a, as a study zone. So definitely come and say hi. Um, during your first weeks, you might not have much work to do, but just to get to know the services available would be really good. So yeah, we'll be doing some chocolate giveaways and some other freebies for the first couple of weeks. So make sure to come in and say hi. And that's all for me, thank you. Thanks. Thanks so much, Jamie. And yeah, I just wanted to say as well, the STEM ambassador program is absolutely fabulous. And do, as Jamie mentioned, just make sure if you're, when you're on campus on first week, or if you're on campus, you might not have any assignments left, but just go and say hello, go and see where they are, go and see the, where the building is. There's going to be chocolates, drink bottles, bags, pens, some really cool things. And, you know, first in best dress. So make sure you go and say hello to the STEM ambassadors in the first week and pick up some of your merch. <laughs> Okay, next, let's get some insider tips. So I'd like to introduce a few uh, students um, so who are actually also STEM ambassadors. So I've kind of uh, double dipped there. Uh, so we're basically gonna go around in alphabetical order. We have, um, we've got Alistair, Dylan, Jasmine, Jim and Nicole, who are going to just answer a couple of questions that you, you know, and give some student perspective, give some insider information. So my first question to the student panel is, um, what are you studying and why did you choose your course? So I'm going to start please with Alistair to see what he did and why. Hey everyone. So yeah, my name's uh, Alistair. I'm currently doing uh, a PhD in electrical electronic engineering. Um, I graduated uh, with a Flinders degree in uh, electrical electronic engineering just last year. Um, so I chose this degree because I was actually working in the engineering field um, for quite a few years beforehand and wanted to kind of further my career and that was kind of the next, next logical step. Um, but after finishing my degree, I actually decided that uh, a PhD was was right for me and, and that was going to take me kind of even further into the, the next steps of my career. Thank you so much, Alistair. Um, let's now hear from um, Dylan. Hello, can you hear me? <laughs> got Dylan on the line. Hello, Dylan. Yeah, how you going, guys? Um, I've got a bit of an unorthodox story where I, I kind of really wanted to just learn more about the world. Um, so I started in two different science degrees just to kind of dabble in everything and see kind of where I wanted to go. Um, so I started in a medical science degree combined with a physics degree, which no one had really done. Um, and now I'm just doing a, a raw bachelor of science uh, for high achievers. Um, so the great thing about uni is you can kind of you can just swap and change degrees. You're not locked in um, and it's really flexible. So that's pretty much my story. Thanks, Dylan. Yeah, let's hear from Jasmine, please. Uh, 
Jasmine on the line. Hi, uh, I'm Jasmine. I'm currently studying Bachelor of Engineering Biomedical uh, combined with medical science. So I'm good help with medical stuff <laughs> and engineering things. Um, I didn't exactly choose my degree. My math teacher did. He knew me very well and it was a very good choice. Fantastic. Thanks, Jasmine. Uh, I'll now pass over to Jim. There you go. Oh, hi, everyone. Um, so my story is I've been working as an engineer for quite some time now. Um, and while working, I've sort of seen that the industry started to move from um, um, the, the conventional uh, engineering things to, to basically more IP based systems. So I wanted to write that change and that's why I came back to uni to film this and um, I wanted to learn IT, so um, with particular attention to networks and cyber security, because um, I wanted to be part of that change in technology rather than just see it from the outside while it passes me by. So that's basically my story why I took the um, Bachelor's of um, um, Information Technology. Thank you, Jim. And last, I'll introduce uh, Nicole. Hello, can anyone, how do I, can anyone see me right now? We can hear you, Nicole, but we can't okay. see you. Good, let's just go with that. Yeah, um, so fine. hello, uh, I'm Nicole. So I am studying biodiversity and conservation and I'm in my honours year. So I chose it pretty much just because I love nature and I was worried about the state of the world and the environment. And so I hoped that the course could equipped me with the knowledge and tools that I needed to make a difference. Fantastic, thanks. And the next question is, what have you found to be uh, the key differences between university and school? And actually for this one, I'm going to call on Nicole and Jamie to answer that, please. So maybe we'll start with Nicole, seeing that she's got her microphone on. Yeah, no worries. So um, I think the key differences is really just the independence and flexibility compared to school. So sometimes that's really great and sometimes it's really difficult. So it sort of depends, you know, what place you're coming from and, you know, the skills that you already have. But I mean, I think that the flexibility is awesome. You know, you can do nearly whatever you want, depending if you're doing online, like you could go to your class in person or attend online the lectures and things a lot of the time. So um, I think that's really nice, but the content is definitely harder than school. But I mean, what what's the point otherwise really? <laughs> so if you're doing something you're passionate and interested in, then I think that you can get through it. Thanks, thanks Nicole. And I, so I just, we'll do our Jays. Can I please hear from uh, Jasmine and Jamie? So um, whoever's ready? Yeah, I can, I can go if you can hear me. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I think the, like Nicole basically said it all, um, you know, there's definitely that independence, but I think another main one is that you get to actually choose what you study. And if you are actually very passionate about it, it doesn't necessarily even feel like you're doing too much work. Like sometimes I can sit down and just work on one problem and I hardly realize that the whole day has passed, but I just enjoy it like that much that, you know, I think the key difference is that if you're doing something you like, it doesn't feel like work. <laughs> and that's, that's a bit of a, you know, common phrase, but in this situation, it definitely can be true. <laughs> Fantastic. And Jasmine, what have you found to be the key differences between university and school? Um, yeah, Jamie and Nicole definitely hit it. It's a lot of independent stuff. Um, doing things that you love means you'll really, really enjoy it. There are things that you're going to have to do that you don't like that you just have to get done. Um, and in that case, because it's such independent study, you've got to be able to push yourself to actually do it. It's not that there's not resources for you. We have heaps of resources to help you, but you've got to be the one who's got to reach out and have that determination to say, hey, I need a hand with this and go see someone and get some help because there's so much help that you need to get you through topics, whether you're enjoying what you're doing or you're not. And yeah. That's probably my opinion. 
Thank you, Jasmine. Now we're I'm going over a little bit over time. So we've got I think we just have. Do you know what? So we've got the help. We think we went through. I want to skip the question just for the sake of time. And let's hear our hot tips for surviving first year and finding your feet at Flinders. Uh, for this one, I want to call on a few of the ones who are doing the undergraduate degrees in particular. So I might start with Dylan. What have you, what tips have you got? Um, interesting. Um, I think uh, one of the main ones, and this is what you might not hear from a lot of people, is I'd really take seriously keeping your health constant um, and, and as good as you can. Um, I think it's easy to kind of fall into the cultural habit of, you know, doing the all nighters and like slamming the energy drinks and like, this is awesome. But uh, I think in the long run, you know, that'll only get you through a month or two. And um, you actually end up, you know, you don't absorb information. You're not really building a good foundation. So that'd probably be my biggest uh, uh, advice there. Um, and also to take university seriously, like university has been this institution that have been around for hundreds of years and, you know, to, to really, um, you know, learn things to a high level, uh, to ask questions, to learn skills you don't really learn in industry, you know, like critical thinking and, and things like that. Take, take that university um, more seriously, I think, would be a good, a good uh, thing to do. Thank you so much, Dylan. Um, and Jasmine, do you have any extra advice? Um... Yes, take uni seriously. I agree with that 100%. Um, but also have fun. Like, it's there's so many clubs and things you can go out to and do. Uni is so much better when you have friends. And even if there's something that's going on that you're like, eh, I don't really think that's for me. I don't really like trivia. You might be surprised that you meet someone who you actually really like and stay friends with for, oh, what has it been now? Four years that poor Eric has been stuck with me. Um, yeah. You meet people doing things. So the more things you do, the more people you can meet. Thank you, Jasmine. And I know, I think we have one more minute. I might actually call on Jim, who's in his master's, but just to give a bit of a perspective, uh, his perspective coming in a bit later and as an international student. What are your, some of your tips, Jim? Well, my number one tip is actually to connect. Um, for a first year student or someone who's starting uni, I think you really need a friend. Meet someone, find that special friend that you can relate to. Um, you know, if you're going to suffer in uni, suffer with someone. Share that miserable thing that you're going to do. But if you're going to succeed, you know, you also want to be with someone to actually share and enjoy that success and enjoy the accolades of that um, event, you know. So, number one that got me sane going through uni is actually finding that special friend that actually pushed me into actually doing, you know, the assignments, um, kept me um, in check with what are the deadlines, you know, the exam things that we have to review for everything. So go find someone because it's easier to actually go through uni life if you're not doing it alone. That's my, my tip. Thank you so much, Jim, and I think that's really, really excellent advice. And I'm not a student, but I would say that's probably one of the most important things. Um, and on that note, just a reminder, if you don't know anyone, if you're coming from interstate, if you're sort of none of your friends from school are here in your course, join the OGUI program. It's the easiest way to do it. Um, and come in, if you'd like to sort of pick the, bra your, the brains of any of our fabulous STEM ambassadors on that first week, pick up your chocolates, pick up your drink bottle, pick up your notebook. Um, and have a chat, a chat to them in the first week about their other bits of tips and information um, before you start um, hitting them up for help with your, your stats assignment. On that note, we're at 1 minute to 11 and we're just about to head into the discipline, discipline sessions. I was hoping to give you a bit of a coffee break. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, thank you so much to everyone that um, has tuned in, those uh, fabulous students who have helped talking and to our deans who have uh, deans and student admin services who have helped. Um, so as I said, we've got now, right now actually, our discipline specific se uh, sessions where you'll really start to hear more about your course and also break out into groups and meet your course coordinator and current students. Uh, I haven't had a chance to really look at the chat, 
Um, we'll get to questions where we can after. Of course, if you've got anything else, send me an email, tessa.lane at flinders.edu.au. Um, and then that might be over and out for me. Thanks for listening, and I'll see the science students in the next session. Bye, everyone. <laughs>